couplets were the first ever to survive birth. And here's what they look like 20 years on. Bobby and Kenny McCauley faced a seemingly impossible prospect in 1997. Having given birth to Michaela Marie one year earlier, Bobby was pregnant again. This time, however, the stakes were much higher, and what they were facing would have tested even the most enthusiastic of expectant parents. The road to getting pregnant again hadn't been an easy one for Bobby McCauley, however, not least because she'd been born with a malfunctioning pituitary gland. For this reason, she did not produce enough hormones to stimulate ovulation. And as a result, she and Kenny decided that she should undergo hormone therapy treatments to aid conception. Fortunately, though, Bobby required just a single shot of fertility drug, Metrolin, in her quest. After that, she subsequently became pregnant with multiple babies, as is common for women following such a regimen. However, doctors then found an extraordinarily high number of healthy embryos in her womb. Seven, to be exact. I'll always remember the day we found out there were so many, Bobby told the Des Moines Register in 2013. It wasn't like, yoo there were so many doubts. To a lot of people, this might sound trite, but God determined the outcome. And while a lot of people had their opinions as to what expectant parents of so many children should do, the McCoys decided to let their faith guide them. That choice led them to make one decision that may have proved controversial for some. Specifically, the couple declined selective reduction during the pregnancy. This procedure aims to eliminate the strain on the health of the developing babies by aborting some of the fetuses. There was still a major risk in the attempt to carry seven healthy babies to term them. In fact, there had never been a set of septuplets that had survived childbirth. Obstetricians Karen Drake and Paula Mahone were subsequently charged with the baby's care. And they and the other doctors involved worried that the newborns would struggle to make it through their first few days out of the womb. But Drake, Mahone, and the McCauley's pre-birth planning was put into action on November 19, 1997, when doctors subsequently delivered these seven babies by cesarean section within six minutes of each other. Kenny Jr., Alexis, Natalie, Kelsey, Nathan, Brandon, and Joel all arrived nine weeks prior to their due date. Nevertheless, all of them survived, the first ever set of septuplets to do so. Understandably, the septuplets' arrival received national media coverage, and as a consequence, many people reached out to the extra-large family. In the beginning, for every ten letters we would get that were happy for us, we'd get one letter accusing us of exploiting the kids and being selfish to waste the world's resources on a family this big, Bobby told Time in 1997. Still, the support seemed to outweigh the negativity, and it made quite a difference to the family, too. For one thing, they received a free 5,500-square-foot, 5 7-bedroom home large enough for all their children. What's more, the donations didn't end there, as the family also received a free van, nanny services, clothes, and diapers for the first two years of the septuplets lives. The latter served the McCauley's well, since the babies went through 52 diapers per day in the early months. Celebrities joined in with the congratulatory gestures too. For instance, then-President Bill Clinton called the family to wish them well after the historic birth. They also made an appearance on the Oprah Winfrey Show and later met President George W. Bush. After the spotlight faded, though, the family subsequently fell into normal lives in their native Iowa. Occasionally, Bobby would provide brief updates on her children's lives on their birthday. However, their upbringing was, for the most part, a pretty secluded one. That also meant that Bobby and Kenny Sr. had to become budget savvy in order to provide for eight growing children after all the free goods and services ran out. Consequently, they bought in bulk for decades and cultivated their own garden for produce. And they still work hard, too. Kenny Sr. is employed at a metal coating company, and Bobby's day job is in special needs education. But while they've always remained grateful for their home, they've also made sure that the kids know it didn't come from their average salaries alone. My fear has always been that they see our jobs and think that's all they need for nice stuff, Kenny Sr. told the Des Moines Register. I've given them the cold, hard truth slowly. No way could I afford this home on my salary, and if you want something, you have to work for it. And it seems as though the father's words have sunk in with his septuplets. Indeed, each one had a job while still in high school, using their money to pay for extras such as cell phones and tablets. We were taught if we want something, we have to work for it, Kenny Jr. told NBC News in May of 2016. In that month, moreover, all seven siblings graduated from Carlisle High School, each with unique dreams for the future. The firstborn subtuplet, Kenny Jr., went to the Des Moines Area Community College in order to carve out a career in construction. 
Nathan, meanwhile, has a strong interest in science and wants to work in that field in the future. Alexis, who graduated at the top of her high school class, aspires to teach. So does third-born Natalie, who dreams of working in an elementary school. And while Kelsey was the smallest of the babies, weighing in at only two pounds, five ounces, now she's a healthy young woman who will study music in college. Sixth-born Brandon, on the other hand, had enlisted in the military, realizing a dream that he had held since the tender age of three. As for the final subtoplet, Joel, he's currently studying computer science. Alexis and Nathan have had to work even harder to achieve as much as they have, since both were born with cerebral palsy. Nathan even taught himself to walk because, as he told the Des Moines Register in November of 2015, he really wanted to learn. What's more, he's just been getting better and better at it over time. Kelsey, meanwhile, would tell today, I feel like I'm starting my life, but my brothers and sisters are my best friends. Kenny Jr. added, what I'm not going to like is we won't be around each other. I couldn't be where I am today without them. As for mom and dad, they'll have a seriously empty nest now. It'll be pretty drastic, Bobby told the Des Moines Register. Everyone gone all at once. After adding that the years have flown by, Bobby concluded, it's sad to see things end, but there will be lots of firsts coming. Please share this video with your friends below.